So welcome to this session, which is all about the flow. Yeah? So after your lunch break, you can enjoy yourselves maybe a little bit and get in contact with a topic which is currently floating all over the network um, conferences, for, for example, um, which is software-defined networking and open flow. So I assume a lot of you guys are already familiar with OpenFlow. So who is already familiar with OpenFlow? Just to ask. Oh, OK. So the other ones, don't bother. I, I give a very short introduction. Uh, and if you want to go into details, then um, just Google it. You, you get a lot of slides from different conferences. And the University of Stanford, which is uh, pretty much very excellent in, in this uh, area, my name is Sebastian Riga. I'm with the uh, um, University of Applied Sciences here in Fulda since the beginning of last semester. And before, I was uh, with different scientific data centers here in uh, Germany. And um, so I'm, I'm pretty much kind of a data center guy. Yeah? And I, I think you are all familiar with uh, data centers and, and networks in, in data centers. So because you guys do network management, so there is a lot of network to, to manage in a data center. Um, and from my point of view, what you find in, in current data centers is um, things like complex topologies. So you have all those networking devices, you have switching routing devices, for example, um, and you have a sort of a hierarchy uh, of all those devices going on like uh, top-of-the-rack switches where you have all your server racks and, and then you have distribution switches and getting more to the, uh, the border, you get those uh, routing like, like layer three um, devices, for example. And, and you need to, to manage them and an obvious good way to manage them is, is of course, OpenNMS. Um, but even in OpenNMS, as of today, as I'm informed at least, uh, actually I've, I've uh, got a little experience with uh, OpenNMS as, as it was used in one of the data centers here also, but um, there were also those nice competitors that I won't name for uh, legal purposes here, but you find some of them on the slides uh, afterwards. Um, but uh, as I see it, uh, it's still like, or, or every network uh, management software um, nowadays is sort of fixed or limited to the device level. So, so you manage a lot of devices, you configure SNMP, and you, you do some discovery to uh, discover hosts and, and devices and things like that. So it's a, it's a rather static management, so to say. Um, and I would call it for today, just for today, hardware-defined networking. So, and, and maybe configuration-defined networking. Um, where you use all those management frameworks like OpenNMS, for example, like OpenView or... <laughs> Uh, Tivoli, Net, Netcool, or what, whatever uh, you like to use. And on the other hand, you don't have those static um, hierarchical um, networks. You have dynamically provisioned services, dynamically provisioned applications, yeah? um, especially in the area of cloud computing, for example. You, you want to be able to... Um, configure a, a VLAN to, to spread across different sites, for example. And, and that doesn't uh, need to take very long, be, or, or that, that shouldn't take very long, because you have the, those data center interconnection going on, and you want to migrate virtual machines, for example, from one side to another. And um, as soon as the machine powers up uh, on the other side, then you want to be able uh, to have the entire network configuration that you had in the, uh, on the first side also on the second um, side. So you have very dynamic requirements today, which are not entirely device-based. Um, we, we can say for a moment that they depend on the network like, like logic. So um, you need a dynamic network configuration to, to spread the entire um, configuration of, of the network um, across different data centers, for example. And this is not, not a very new idea, actually. So, by the end of the 90s, there was um, this paradigm going around at different networking conferences, for example, like the Integrated uh, Management Conference or the NOMS, um, where you found different papers 
on the topic of programmable networks, yeah, where you can sort of um, solve the, the, uh, the issue that I just brought up and configure the network dynamically. Yeah? You have sort of a software that is able to uh, um, configure all those devices and, and you don't need uh, to type um, a lot of configuration sequences into a different layer two or layer three devices. Um, but I said it's, it's not a new idea and I also need to say it's not only um, not very new, uh, also it, it somehow got stuck. So um, people said it's, it's too complicated, it's, it's too sophisticated, I, I don't want to configure everything with um, specific software or um, certain programs that I need to develop just before I can use my network. Um, on the other hand, you have this new trend like um, software-defined networking, which is sort of based on this idea, like programmable, uh, programmable networks, um, but yet it's, it's a bit simpler. Um, so what is done there? Those guys who already has, raised their hands um, that they are familiar with OpenFlow, they pretty much know this already. Um, you have a separation between control and forwarding plane or control and data plane. So in a typical layer two switch, you have those two things combined. Yeah, you have layer two forwarding, which is based on tables. Um, tables like this, for example, where you have a MAC address and a port, for example. Um, and this configuration, this, this table is also controlled, is configured in this specific device. Yeah, so um, to follow me uh, in, into the next slides, you just need to move the configuration of these tables up into a separate instance, into a separate um, controlling device, which is hence named the controller. So one controller is able to configure different layer two switches, for example, to um, distribute specific tables um, regarding the uh, network header information. So for example, you can think of tables uh, which are looking at, at specific TCP ports, for example, or at specific source MAC addresses. So this is the obvious use that you have uh, from, from typical normal um, layer two switches right now as of today. Um, but as I said, you have uh, also the possibility to focus on, on TCP, for example. There you can see that you can, can walk up the layers uh, and, and use tables also for more specific switching, which is not only based on, on layer two. Okay, so nice. Um, if, we, if we use this landscape, then we would call everything which is southbound from the controller um, the network devices. So we say southbound to, to this direction here, obviously, and northbound are the applications. So applications like cloud computing, for example, like I presented um, in the slide before, like um, virtual machines, devices or applications um, that want to configure the network so that it gets the job done they, they want it to do, for example. Okay, so like I already started, um, there doesn't necessarily need to be only one controller. There can be multiple controllers. Uh, for example, for um, high availability, for example, if one controller goes down, then the other one um, can get the job done. Um, and also to do things like slicing. And slicing leads us in the next topic, which is uh, interesting um, development, I think, in, in the area of, of networks today, computer networks today which is network virtualization. So you split your network into different parts which are isolated from each other, for example, which are able to scale across different sites, for example. Um, so this is even also not entirely new because you know things like VLANs, like VPNs, or uh, things like that. So it's like overlay networks, um, kind of. Um, but the idea which is new here is this dynamic configuration that I also pointed out um, on the slide before. Okay, so if you are focusing on the configuration of, of flows in, in the network, then you are able to um, implement things like dynamic topologies. So topologies which are able to um, fit certain uh, specific requirements or requirements as they arise, for example. So you get 
maybe uh, to, to stay in the FCAPS um, example that OpenNMS is also focused, uh, focusing on, um, you get an enhanced configuration management, more flexible. So, okay, so you are all bored. This guy is talking about um, network virtualization stuff and the open flow and, and things like that. And, and you are on, 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 on a pretty much other conference, right? You are, you are talking about OpenNMS. So what has this all to do with uh, OpenNMS? And I think it's, it's pretty obvious because um, all those networking vendors right now, uh, they are looking at this. This stuff I, I just told you about, like this network virtualization, like this uh, open flow stuff and software-defined networking. And they are eager to, to offer some products or some solutions that are able to fulfill exactly this requirement. So you find, for example, the 1PK um, platform, which is actually programmable networking uh, for Cisco devices in the Cisco One platform. You find it from Brocade, which, uh, interestingly enough, is moving from the SAN into the LAN and, and even WAN um, sites, but you uh, have pretty much already realized that. Um, you also see it with Juniper, for example, with HP, um, with Force 10. So all offer, um, all those vendors offer some sort of um, software-defined networking right now. Also, the uh, players in the uh, uh, server virtualization environment, so like Hyper-V from, from Microsoft or uh, Zen from, from Citrix, for example, they are also looking um, at things like OpenFlow or the, the SDN. So I think it might be worth uh, a look um, to start thinking, do we need to implement some sort of SDN capabilities for OpenNMS? Uh, what can we leverage from um, SDNs and OpenFlow? And that's pretty much... Um, what I have on the next slides to come. Just to uh, uh, furthermore express the need to do so, uh, this is an, uh, a screen dump from um, Google Trends, where I just entered the OpenFlow versus SDN. And you can see pretty much in um, uh, 2011, nobody uh, talked about SDN or software-defined network. So it's, it's just rising here. Um, OpenFlow has also a large increase in uh, topics or searches uh, available in, in Google regarding um, this new networking paradigm on, on network technique. So where can you use it? Especially you, you can use it with uh, those virtualization environments like server virtualization environments, uh, environments uh, that I already uh, told you about, like Zen, for example, like KVM. Um, and also you have the Open vSwitch, which is an open virtual switch, uh, which is integrated into OpenStack, for example. So there you have it. It's pretty much the cloud computing thing uh, that I uh, already pointed out on the requirement side. Good. So the use cases are not uh, entirely limited to um, data centers. You can also use uh, the, uh, this technique on campuses uh, in the enterprise across WANs, which is um, very fascinating because if you uh, take a look at a talk from uh, Urs Hölzle, which is the CTO, I think, of, of Google, so um, very interesting guy, by the way. Um, he presented on the, uh, uh, in April 2012, I think, he presented the uh, Google WAN uh, or wireless area network, which is uh, based on OpenFlow as of today, as, as we are talking about it. So they built their, their own um, networking devices, implemented uh, their own networking devices, um, and implemented uh, entirely this, this open flow idea to get better resilience, to get faster fault tolerance, for example, and even um, more performance. Maybe you remember the news uh, that spread, I think, exactly in, in April last year, uh, where they said that they, have, uh, that they have a very high utilization of their um, wireless, uh, their wide area networks, um, and this is uh, based on, on the talk I, I was just um, referring to. But you have also projects in the uh, uh, US going on in the Internet 2 domain, which is uh, the Gini uh, project, and the Forward project in the uh, EU, which is also for, um, focusing on research networks, which are based on um, software defined networking and open flow. 
So, and you guys already have some sort of a question in your own uh, mailing list that I found. So, at least one guy, I, I won't point out uh, the name, maybe uh, some of you already know, because some start laughing. Um, <laughs> he just asked, so, well, there's an interesting idea going around in the networking scene, which is SDN and OpenFlow. Um, should we bother? And uh, I think you already guessed it. He didn't get an answer. So... <laughs> I'm on the side of this guy, and um, I, I will sort of uh, drive a, or, or, or make, make a critical view or, or a critical perspective on, on this topic, but there was already another one uh, thinking about this as an interesting topic for OpenNMS. Okay, so what to do? First of all, you could say, okay, well, we go on, those, uh, on, on this exciting SDN train and, and we develop our own SDN strategy and um, blah, blah, blah. So that, that's not what, what I um, would recommend to do. Um, I think the, the more interesting aspect could be uh, to take a look at the vendors that you have right now, that what they are um, doing, like, like Cisco, for example, like Juniper, for example, um, then you extend your configuration management, for example, your monitoring. I give some um, ideas for, for possible improvements or enhancements uh, there on the next slides. Um, and you can also take a look at the uh, uh, competitors in uh, this area, maybe. Um, I found two references, uh, which are actually from the same guy, so it's uh, maybe nearly the same project, but... Um, I added the second one, uh, the second paper, uh, which focuses on QoS in the Ophelia, uh, because the Ophelia network is actually such a um, European research network. Uh, so this might be, uh, might be also an interesting thing. And he presented, I think it, it was in Darmstadt, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I think it's, uh, it was in Germany, uh, really close to uh, our location right now, where those guys presented um, an open flow virtualization framework for switch and controller management using open NMS. So you have sort of a first um, idea where this can be of, of any use. And I said I don't want to point out any competitors, but they have sort of plugins for uh, checking or monitoring uh, the status of open flow controllers, for, for example. You have uh, network operation centers uh, or um, operation centers in the uh, research project going on in the U.S., for example, um, where you can also take a look. And, and maybe it's, it's uh, quite interesting to uh, look at the OpenStack, which is uh, funded by a lot of those uh, vendors that I just uh, talked about, like Cisco, like um, HP, for example. Um, and they have this networking component, so a network virtualization, a cloud networking uh, component, which is named Quantum, uh, and this is also based on the uh, uh, Open vSwitch, like I already showed you, which also is able to use um, OpenFlow. Okay, so nice. So what, what can we learn from all this? What, what, when, uh, what can we take home? It's pretty much the end of the conference. You have one session to go. And um, so this, this introduction is maybe meant sort of li like a f future outlook. This is, from my point of view, this is nothing that you need to focus on right now, uh, which is very, very critical. Yeah? But it's maybe uh, something which is coming down the road very fast right now from different vendors, uh, from different perspectives, um, and might offer new technologies or new possibilities um, for solving problems in the networking area. Okay, so... What can, we, what can we do after the hype settles? Because obviously uh, um, a lot of guys are talking about uh, SDN right now and uh, you don't need to follow every hype which is uh, out there. Um, but after things are pretty much settled uh, or the cloud has disappeared, yeah, then, then you have some rain going on down to earth. I, I don't know. Anyway, you're down to earth then. Yeah. Um, and... I think then we can start uh, thinking about those um, improvements that you get from this technology and that might be that you have like content-centric or content-aware networks uh, which are able to 
uh, optimize the topology or the traffic flows regarding on QoS um, requirements, like bitrate, for example, like jitter, uh, delay, for example. Also, custom topologies, like network uh, topologies spreading around uh, or across multiple sites, um, might be enhanced using this technology. Um, very interesting is also that you can use multiple networking techniques together in one controller. So Google integrates or integrated it, uh, example, uh, for example, to uh, migrate from an MPLS uh, structure or actually an MPLS traffic engineering um, to, a open, to an open flow um, wide area network. You can also integrate it with uh, different controllers from providers like or vendors like, like Cisco or even you, you can take a look at the um, IETF or IRTF which are also forming uh, workgroups um, developing protocols for software-defined networking right now. Um, all this might give you a better operation, administration, and maintenance, so you are able to do a more fine-grained management and, and monitoring in the future because you can control the logic, you can control the, the configuration of the network um, using s sort of a, a brain in, in the network or that, that the network uh, has uh, itself. Okay, um, using this brain or using this dynamic configuration, you are able to uh, more simply and, and rapidly provision changes uh, in the network, for example, for cloud computing or moving um, virtual machines around um, without having all those CLI hassle or configuration of SNMP that is going on right now, or that, that you definitely need uh, to cope with uh, today. Okay, um, flexible traffic flows, I already talked about that. You um, get all those um, improvements, all those advantages of network virtualization, which is isolation, obviously, so you can use multiple tenants um, and offer them specific slices of the network and um, offer specific uh, customer-dependent de uh, configuration of, of, the, uh, of each slice. But you can also maybe uh, go a step further in um, network analyzation. So by tapping the uh, configuration information, which is distributed to the switches from the controller, you are able to take a look at every single flow which is going on there. Um, this is not entirely new because you know things like R flow, S flow, for example. But here you can do it uh, in a more dynamic uh, way, or you can program specific triggers, for example, um, and get just the, the information you need, like topology changes, for example. Okay, so this leads us to a, a thing I would like to call flow based monitoring. Like I already said, this is not new. You already know things like, like S-flow, R-flow, for example, but you already know, uh, you, you also know, if you're familiar to these concepts, you know that you have a lot of data then. Yeah? I, I know nowadays it's, it's not a big deal because you have all those big data things going on, and uh, it's not a, not a problem to um, maybe save and analyze all your networking data, like, like petabytes, for example. Uh, actually, it is, yeah? because our networks get faster and faster, and, and you have... Uh, 100 gig networks, for example, yeah. Um, I wish you good luck if, if you want to uh, um, store the entire uh, campus communications going on with, with 100G. Uh, I think it's, it's not practical to uh, store every flow or analyze every flow. But you can drill down if you use programmable networking because you can set a trigger and then you can take a look at the data and, and, and then you say, okay, I need to go a bit further, deeper, in, into the flow and, and take, a, uh, take a look. This is possible uh, because the uh, programmable uh, management or monitoring that you get from those new uh, technologies. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Generic approach, which I see people do not understand such 
something, and oh no, 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 mm. it's too complicated. And then they start to invent the wheel. Mm. So uh, if it's something really new, I more than happy to understand it. But so yeah. far, I don't see where the knowledge comes from. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, first thing I can remember because I use SNMP like um, from yeah, SNMP 1 and 2, let's, let's say in the data center. So um, what was really ugly was uh, things like flow tables, for example. So if, if you want to take a look at uh, the tables and, and get like a view of which machine is uh, connected across which data path, for example, between um, a big uh, layer 2 topology, for example, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so you can use the uh, technologies that you have today. Uh, absolutely. That's, that's right. Um, but from my point of view, you are a little bit more flexible right here because uh, you can program or you can uh, have specific validation logic, for example. You can take different uh, variables in, into account um, and distribute your configuration based on, on this configuration that you have right now, which you can also do with, with SNMP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why they are reinventing the wheel? This might be marketing. Yeah, that's what you wanted to point out, for example. It's, it's just... Okay. The, 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 novel, the, novel, the novelty that I already pre presented was that you take intelligence, which was the entire last years uh, focusing or, or fixed in the, the switches, you take it from the switches and um, take it to the controller. This is pretty much new because you were, from my point of view, not able with SNMP to have, so, yeah, you, okay, maybe you, you can think of, of an SNMP trap uh, when you get the first um, frame coming in from an unknown source MAC address and then you, you uh, uh, write some application in, but, but you need to write it in the device and I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a good idea. But okay, your, your device might get you some sort of SNMP trap and, and then you, uh, send a configuration back which simply adds uh, an entry to the flow table. So that's what you mean, uh, or not. But I think this, this is rather complicated. Uh, I, I won't go that way because you will get a lot of triggers. You will get a lot of triggers. Um, and here you have the possibility to uh, get the, the frame structure or, or the, the frame header uh, in this open flow configuration protocol and then do your decision based on, on those header informations. Um, you, you can definitely write your own traps and, and execute them on, on the uh, devices, but that's no standard and I think that goes uh, pretty much beyond uh, what, was, uh, what SNMP was designed for. Maybe some, some other guy here uh, joins your view there, but I, I think SNMP was, like I already said, more um, developed to focus on device configuration. So you have sort of OIDs and, and then you get to a specific OID and then you have specific configuration going on there. Um, but I don't think it was intended to, uh, to do a flow configuration. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not familiar with it right now. So, so what do you mean exactly? Can you uh, elaborate so, a little bit? So, are we talking, you're talking about picking up events rather mm -hmm. than uh, configuration. Yeah. So, IPDR is used by excuse me, a lot of cable companies for okay. picking up, effectively it's called data records, but it's from an IP network. Okay. But they use it for uh, IPTV and stuff like that. Ah, okay. It's a standard, so it's, it's uh, potentially more appropriate than SNMP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, and is it like um, used on, on a large basis, or is it just on, in, in telco? Ah, okay, so service providers. Okay, yeah. So, so maybe this is like I said, it's not really new. Yeah, you have all those technologies. So maybe it's it's just a marketing thing. Yeah, maybe you have all those cloud things going on, and now you need a new idea uh, to provision networks, um, and maybe you can also combine it with existing techni uh, techniques. 
Actually, um, OpenFlow did that. Uh, in the uh, first version, there was no such thing like uh, PBB, for example, like provider backbone bridging or uh, MPLS support, uh, and they integrated it into it. So um, maybe this is uh, sort of an answer. Okay, so um, from my point of view, this might be an interesting opportunity um, in several use cases. So uh, you could think of OpenNMS as an application which is just using things like the, the OpenFlow or SDN controllers um, and pulls some information from there. Maybe it gets also a little bit of flow information this way. But um, to uh, tell you about another disadvantage of those new shiny uh, upcoming protocols. Of course, nobody uh, really thought about event notification. Uh, so in the next version, they um, will hopefully integrate it uh, to have things like topology, topology detection and event notification. So as of today, the uh, um, OpenFlow configuration standard um, doesn't offer you things like this. Um, another thing might be to uh, extend existing controllers. Like you have those software um, parts, those uh, programs which offer OpenFlow controllers, and they are extendable. So um, one thing uh, which is run by a big SDN company right now, which is Floodlight. Uh, Floodlight is extensible um, using Java modules. So you can just develop a, a module um, which collects some information for you, for example, and you can use this information as additional information um, in your network management system. So, but this is just an addition. You can pretty much say, I already have enough information. I, I don't need uh, to know anything more. Um, I can agree with that, def definitely. Um, but from uh, the uh, server virtualization perspective, uh, this might be, uh, might be interesting to get the virtualization configuration of, of the networks also to the network management. So exactly, um, this is what I just uh, talked about, like provisioning cloud resources, uh, configuring networks for cloud infrastructures across different sites that might be interesting um, using a separate module in the uh, controller. Um, also, you can use this information to detect overlay topologies. Your normal uh, topologies, you are able uh, to discover them using SNMP, for example, or using existing techniques. But if you have overlay networks, like in your virtualization environment, for example, uh, which is already using things like Open vSwitch, for example, uh, that might be interesting to get this topology also in your uh, network management system. You can also manage the, the flow level, you can manage events, um, but, uh, and you can go to, a, I go a little bit, uh, Back right now, um, to the uh, you you can also use it to do load balancing uh, and failover things, but um, you also have uh, other techniques uh, for that. So um, to uh, get a very critical perspective on on this hype going on, and to join uh, in your colleague that that just asked um, whether we already have uh, pretty much every technology we need to implement this. Um, we can say, or I, I think it's safe to say, that uh, the network management and monitoring won't go exactly into the controller. So you, you will need specific network management and monitoring um, techniques even in the, in the future, obviously, yeah? because you have different um, uh, devices going on and, and uh, the, the entire world is now uh, based on, on other configuration techniques and, and not on this new one. So, and I, I would highly doubt that, that this would, would change because you need to indi uh, individually program your management code into the controller. So if, if I'm talking about, um, or when I talk about a controller, um, then you get like an IDE, like an uh, integrated development environment, and, and then you have um, a method, and then you can implement what your network should do. Yeah? So 
this is not practical for, for management tasks, yeah? uh, then you would implement a lot of uh, different methods. I, I don't think um, they will go that way. Um, as a matter of fact, like I uh, said before, also there are no standards today to manage um, such SDN platforms or open flow networks because they are quite new right now. Um, and I don't even think uh, it would be uh, in the future scope uh, of the intended use of those SDN controllers. Um, another interesting thing to take a look at, for those of you uh, who are willing to experiment with new um, ideas or technologies, it might be interesting to implement uh, a separate controller, which is... Uh, based or somehow connected with OpenNMS um, because, like I said, you can join or you can use multiple controllers for one device. So you can say that the controller manages this table, for example, or one controller, like the OpenNMS control, uh, controller, manages this table, and the other controller manages another table, for example. So you get things like network slicing or managing different aspects, managing configuration uh, for different um, layers uh, of your network, for example. Um, but from my point of view, again, this is, on the other hand, not really in the scope of network management. So um, I think, but, uh, though it would be really interesting, because um, like I think for, for five or six years, I um, heard from my from my boss, things like integrated management. So uh, hopefully every management system um, would uh, join the, the, the information and you, you get a big basis um, about all your assets and, and networking configuration. Um, there you, you might finally have it, uh, but I don't think this is uh, the real intention of the uh, network management and monitoring. So from, from my point of view, uh, I think it might be interesting to take a look at this uh, work that is already going on. And this is actually, again, focusing on virtualization environments. So it might be an interesting um, idea in the future of server virtualization, for example. And coming from a data center, I can tell you that uh, a lot of physical devices get moved and migrated to uh, virtual devices. So you are able to get a better fault tolerance. You can scale out yeah? uh, the compute resources, storage resources, the same. Yeah? You have uh, those storage virtualization going on. Um, so I think SDN might be a possibility to connect those all together, like, like those virtualization environments. OK. Um, yeah, I think I pretty already said that. Um, I think. SDN is just a hype, and I think the hype will go away maybe this year, uh, by the end of this year, maybe maybe next year, and then you will see which stays. So, so which uh, new idea um, stays. And I think uh, the virtualization environments, for example, or the data, connect, uh, data center network interconnections across wide area networks, that might be interesting uh, things coming out of this uh, hype right now. Um, maybe uh, they will also be able to uh, get some management APIs um, so you are able to, to manage your, your flows, for example. But, but as of today, I think I would uh, take a look at the specific networking vendors and, and maybe de um, develop modules um, to uh, be able to, uh, uh, for example, use... Cisco's OpenPK or SDN strategy um, for additional information in your network management. So you can get an even better uh, configuration or performance management, for example, maybe even fault uh, management, if you want to focus on, um, on virtualization environments. So uh, that's pretty much all for today. Um, I'm happy to receive further questions. So, um, so I've been tracking OpenFlow uh, with you to see what, what OpenNMS should do. And, um, as yet, it, it seems still to be very much in the lab. Uh, there's nobody using it in production as far as I can tell, even though a lot of services now have mm -hmm. it as an option. 
Um, so my question really is, I suppose the problem is it's one of these things that could be used for an awful lot of things. Mm -hmm. But in reality, uh, there's other tools that people already have to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So have you got a feel for where it will finally settle down to where it's used? Mm -hmm. And how much of the actual flexibility will be used? And how much will it be just, yeah. you know, fairly simple? Yeah, um, actually production environments, you're, you're right. Um, I can think of the Stanford campus, for example, which is a research environment, um, and uh, the, the Google uh, data center inter interconnect. But that is sort of a closed network. Uh, it's just tailored for them, and, and it's so, so I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think the most interesting uh, thing will be the uh, virtualization environments like OpenStack, for example, because they already use it. You have the, uh, the, the Open vSwitch, for example. Uh, and if, if you take a look at the even bigger player in, in this market, I, uh, I haven't named it, but uh, obviously VMware, uh, they have uh, in their vSphere uh, environment, they, uh, they are able to integrate um, networking uh, management modules, uh, no, uh, networking switches, virtual network switches, uh, um, even from Cisco, for example, uh, like the Nexus two, uh, 1000V, um, or the Open vSwitch, for example, so they are pretty much flexible. And um, if I take a look at, at Zen, Citrix, you have the same. Yeah, uh, there, I think there is uh, the Open vSwitch uh, also already integrated. So I think those, those cloud environments um, would be a definitely an uh, in interesting thing to, uh, to go for in 2013, I think. See, I suppose my, my question that comes down to it is, um, yes, so those things are built in, but is, is OpenFlow being used for all its capabilities, or is it just a template, mm -hmm. relatively, you know, just either A or B, and it's just used as a, a way of changing configuration? Yeah, quickly. yeah, sure. In which case, you know, what we already do with VMware may be, there m may not be very much more for us to do, mm -hmm. based on the fact we already can track VMware. Yeah, if, if, if you have a, a homogeneous um, VMware environment, for example, um, you have those uh, vMotion things going on, for example, um, then you have, you have it already. Um, but if you want to integrate it with different environments from different vendors, I think then things get interesting. And um, in the last years, uh, actually I'm talking from a, you pretty much figured it out already, but I'm talking from a research pers perspective. So. Um, if, if I take a step back and think as a data center guy, I would give you the advice I already uh, uh, repeated a couple of times. So wait, yeah, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, hype going on right now and, and nobody's able to tell what is of, of real value. So I, I wanted to point out which might be or, or what, what might be of value. Um, and uh, to, to repeat again, I think the cloud environments might be of specific value. Um, but... From a research perspective, um, I think there, there, are, there needs to be more development done right now. So you're right. But um, I think it was introduced like uh, 2008 or it's so, so it's, it's not really that new. And um, in Germany, the uh, uh, national telecommunications provider, uh, they joined the OpenFlow consortium, for example. Um, but Maybe it's for political I'm reasons. So, no, I've, seen it. I've seen people present it at commercial conferences. I've seen, it, I mean, I know of a, vet, of a service provider in Canada who's mm -hmm. playing with open source. Yeah, okay. uh, so it kind of comes up as something everybody's talking about, and all of the vendors are talking about it. But it's kind of still seems to be, and I'd be very interested to know what other people's feedback out is, you know, because generally, from the lack of knowledge of it, it sort of hasn't reached. Mainstream, yeah, but, but my, exactly. You know, right. it's it's like OpenNMS is great to get into a lab, and I'm really interested in what these guys have done with OpenNMS at the Budapest Institute. Mm -hmm. um, although they haven't contributed any of it back, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> That's it. Okay. You know, um, so I will get in touch with them to see mm -hmm. if they want to do that. But you know, it's it's kind of like chicken and egg. You know, until somebody actually wants to sponsor a project mm -hmm. or do it and contribute it, it's very hard for us to. Yeah. Sure. Do something that's so speculative. Sure. Um, maybe maybe it's interesting to uh, um, know a bit in advance which might uh, or what might come down the road. So that's that's what I wanted to bring across. Okay.
So, uh, you guys, any opinion about this stuff? <laughs> yeah, um, I think you can use, uh, there you have another uh, plethora of, of different tools going on, like, like Puppet, like Chef, like um, if, if you use uh, Ubuntu, for example, you have this mass uh, going on and, and things they have. Um, I think it's, it's kind of the, uh, the, uh, exactly the same thing just for configuring compute resources. So you have different approaches to, to provision um, virtual machines and uh, to configure those machines uh, to use them for LAMP, for example, or specific configuration like, like web servers and, and clusters and, and things like that. Um, but from my point of view, uh, I think Puppet is not really focusing on network configuration right now because what, what I can see uh, on the quantum side, for example, when I take a look at the OpenStack, uh, then I see more com concepts like OpenFlow. Ah, and, 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 and I meant to extend. My talk was um, titled Go with the Flow. Yeah, okay, sure. That was just um, an appetizer. Um, the, the concept is SDN, and uh, I would totally agree with you. Um, maybe we will see something in the near future which has nothing to do with OpenFlow anymore because people keep saying, okay, it's just scientific uh, research or whatever, but we have the requirements that it wanted to address. And uh, that's why I, I wanted to focus on software-defined networking and not, I, I said OpenFlow as an example for software-defined networking. So the program, programmable network, that's more the thing that might be getting like, like new energy uh, because it has already been there. Um, but I, I would totally agree. We will see it maybe by the, as you said, like, like the end of the year, there might be something coming up. Okay. Yeah. So the I create guy that are going to publish doesn't exist. And yet we're supposed to have hardware to play with in the lab. It's not able. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how this is all going to come together, but Yeah, I found it interesting in, in the uh, webcast that I mentioned. Um, I think they they said, but, but they said first quarter or second quarter of uh, 2013, there will be an open flow enabled uh, 1000V, for example, Nexus. That's pretty much interesting. And what, you, what is even more interesting from, uh, for us from, from a uh, university uh, point of view, uh, for networking labs, uh, they offered a thing like Virtual Internet Routing Lab, though, which is uh, referenced to in, in this um, in this talk. Uh, I didn't find anything about it, so pretty much the same, maybe. I think, I think it'll be a 56 Nexus 5K. Okay. 56 90, and it's one of the ones that's called Spectrum. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that's okay. Okay. So it has, so when you SMP, and I haven't done this, but I need to, so both of it just looks like a card. It just looks like a module, not like a 3020 today, a separate entity with its own IP address. The new, they won't have IPs in it. They're just, they'll just look like cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or modules. But anyway, it's supposed to be, but all that SMP functionality that's there today, like you need to, you know, get all the interfaces. Yeah. But 
Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the point is if you wanted to do both at the same time, and you had a recipe. Yeah, okay. Uh, mm. you, need, you need to orchestrate mm. storage utilization of networks, and each uh, vertical has its own uh, tools. But, uh, but exactly, you, you mentioned the, the word that I wanted to bring up stacks, right? You, it's, it's all about stacking. You, you have compute resources, storage resources, you have networking resources, you bring them together, you call, call it open stack, you call it open Cirrus, you call it, call it uh, eucalyptus, you name it. Yeah? Maybe from VMware th there will come something down the road like vCloud and, and things like that. Um, and I think it's, it's totally right. It will be interesting whether we, we can get some sort of unique way to configure uh, a heterogeneous networking infrastructure and networking devices programmatically, and that might be uh, a solution that, that we take a look uh, at here right now. I think that's exactly the question. Yeah. That, you know, you go to research, just for example, and you can the network. Exactly. Exactly. At least in my experience, it's all about a module in the kernel running as a distributed virtual switch. So every hypervisor has its module, which is a kernel module. Mm -hmm. You just have to need to orchestrate the configuration of different hosts so that they can talk to each other and know that they're in the same virtual network. Yeah. With the tiny exception that Google, for example, use it on, uh, uses it on physical devices also. But that's something in the far future to be interesting for, for real production environments. Yeah, right. Yeah. This morning I talked about uh, like provisioning, and I, was, I mentioned software defining infrastructure. And, you know, so, and, and I mentioned your talk in my talk because I wanted to read the link. Okay, and, I, and I'm awfully sorry that I needed to attend another conference. Uh, I was uh, totally sorry. And, and that, uh, no, if you look at SD. X, where X you know, is infrastructure and network, that is exactly the piece that's missing in the infrastructure. So right now, you, you have you know, storage, you have the computing bricks, you have balancers, you have DNS, you, but you're still missing the network. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then you have still have to set right. up manually. And that's you know, the missing piece. And automation, like he said, is going to be the driving force between uh, for, for, for SDN. I totally agree. People I totally agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. That will be, you know, the, the, the driving force between adoption and the Yeah, I totally agree. And regardless whether it's physical networking or it's virtual networking, you need to manage it anyway. And, and you need to monitor it anyway. So, and of course, monitoring, I mean, could, could also could still use until we figure out a better solution. You know, the, the good old-fashioned... <laughs> Absolutely. That Maybe... That would be uh, probably you know, outdated or not a big point. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we are a little bit over time, I think. Yeah,